Hello everyone, Charles Watts here. Welcome back to Inside Arsenal. It is Monday. It is the day after Arsenal's 0-0 draw at the Etihad Stadium. I hope you're all having a very good start to your week. I hope you've all sort of calmed down a little bit from the tension of yesterday. Not the most exciting of game, but a very tense game nonetheless. I certainly gave it a lot of thought as I was driving back from Manchester yesterday down the motorway, thinking over the game and um, how I kind of felt about it all. And so, yeah, I want to talk about it in today's show. We'll go over what my Carl Arteta's had to say. I'll run back over my player ratings. I have changed my player ratings a little bit. As I said, when I was driving back down the motorway, I was thinking about things more, assessing things more in my mind. And I have made a couple of tweaks to them to, um, I think, sort of better show what some of the Arsenal players did in that game. So I'll go through those a little bit. Got some sort of reaction from you guys in terms of what you saw from Arsenal yesterday. So plenty to discuss on what was a pretty, um, well, it was a big day in the Premier League. No doubt about it. Big day. I mean, it was a goalless draw. It was nil-nil for the neutral. And I've seen everyone moaning about it on social media. Oh, it's a rubbish game to watch. It was a boring game to watch. I've seen criticism of Arsenal, which just makes me laugh. Uh, and I'll get to that um, during the show because it wasn't a brilliant spectacle that everyone was hoping for. I have to admit, it was the exact sort of game that I was expecting. Myself and James Bench spoke about it on Inside Arsenal Extra Time earlier on in the week. We said it wasn't going to be your classic Man City versus Liverpool game, which is gung-ho, cup football almost, attack versus attack. It was always going to be different. It was always going to be fairly similar to the game we saw at the Emirates earlier on in the season. That's exactly how it panned out. Um, but for Arsenal, I thought it was a really, really solid professional performance and a performance which proves the point really it shows that this is an Arsenal team that mean business and that's what the overriding thought from the game as I was driving home yesterday thinking about it was this is a proper proper football team that we're watching with Arsenal now the days of Arsenal you know having their tummies tickled going up to these sort of games and these big teams kind of just patting them on the head sarcastically almost uh, saying oh well done you played nice football well done but we beat you 4-0 we beat you 5-0 uh, you know games that we've seen happen time and time again I just think those days are gone there might be the odd bad defeat that happens it's football you can be the best team in the world and you can get hammered on your day but by and large this Arsenal team is a different animal now to the one that I think certainly the world has had a view on of Arsenal for a long, long time. And they showed that yesterday with how they performed against this Manchester City team who hadn't got, I think the last time was October 2021, that they hadn't scored in the league at the Etihad. And Arsenal comfortably saw the saw their threat off yesterday. Um, it was just, a, I, don't, I don't know how to describe it, really. I mean, I say professional performance and it was a professional performance, but it was, all, it was more than that. I think it was a statement. I think, from Arsenal in terms of what they're about and how difficult they are. We know all season we've seen how tough they are to play against, how many clean sheets they keep, how difficult it is for opponents to open them up. But playing away at Manchester City is different to everything else you face, apart from maybe at Anfield. To go there and do what Arsenal did against Man City is a really, really tough ask. Not many teams, if any, can do that, what Arsenal did yesterday. I think they deserve a lot of credit for how they performed. I mean, you look at the stats, it was a very even game. You know, expected goals, both of them just under a shade of one. City had double the amount of shots of Arsenal. They only had one shot on target, though Arsenal had two. As I said in the build-up to the game, I thought it was a game when Man City were going to dominate territory and possession. They did. That was no surprise. Arsenal were going to look to counter them when they could. I think the big thing for Arsenal is they just they didn't have the attackers in the right frame of mind or in the right fitness more uh, more importantly, to take advantage of some of the situations. You know, I'm utterly convinced that if they had a Saka and Martinelli who are 100% fit in that game yesterday, they win it. But they had a Martinelli who was only fit enough to play 15 minutes and they had Saka who was just not fit at all. And it was so obvious from the start that Saka wasn't fit. And by the time the second half had rolled around, he was clearly at about 50%. I'm surprised he stayed on as long as he did. And I think that was a frustrating thing because I do think that was a game Arsenal could have won. and But they just didn't have the forwards to really be able to take advantage of it and really hurt City on the counter-attack. And that was a that was a bit of a shame. But um, this was the moment, I think, when you look at it, if you're watching on YouTube, when Arsenal broke forward, Thomas Partey came on, played a lovely sort of line-splitting pass to Odegaard. Odegaard turned, released Trostard down the left. And this sort of freeze frame is... The moment where your kind of game plan had the opportunity to pay off spectacularly 
You know, you do what you have to do. You keep City at bay and then suddenly you hit and you break and you've got them on the counter-attack. And Arsenal had that opportunity and Trossard's first touch just let him down. I was watching it again when I got in last night and I was thinking, why? Because in real time, you just think, pass it, pass it, pass it. And you could see Mikel Arteta was so frustrated. He had his hands on his head. He was like, he turned around to the bench. I was watching it and he was like, just pass it across. But when you actually watch it, he just doesn't get his first touch right. He doesn't get it out of his feet. And by the time you're in this situation, if you see the ball's on his right foot, it's behind him. You can't play that pass to Martinelli. He needed to get the first touch right and then just be able to whip it across with his left foot. Had he done that, you know, Trossard's easily good enough to pick out Martinelli with his left foot there. But he just, it was his first touch, let him down at the crucial, crucial point. And had it not, then Arsenal could well have been, you know, walking away with a 1-0 win. And it would have been what you call a sort of tactical masterclass type job from Mikel Arteta and, uh, and Arsenal. So I think they, there was a big opportunity. They had others. I think they had the best chances in the game. You know, there was this one, obviously, that they didn't take advantage of. There was a one when Saka got in down the right and squared the ball across to Gabriel Jesus. He just couldn't quite get there in time. I thought Kanji did well in that situation. He got across Jesus and just disrupted his run. Uh, there were the two shots for Jesus in the first half as well. Um, that went just wide that he could have done better with. I mean, Man City, they didn't really have anything. They had that one header, which basically hit Ake from a set piece and fortunately went straight at um, uh, David Raya. Had that been anywhere else, it was a goal. But it went straight at David Raya. Other than that, you had the miscue from Haaland at the end when he was trying to think square the pass to, to Ruben Diaz. But other than that, it was, uh, you know, Arsenal shut them out and they shut them out very, very well. And um, Gabriel was just, Absolutely brilliant. I know Saliba got man of the match and Saliba was fantastic as well. I thought Saliba was a little bit nervy early on, but he really grew into the game. Saliba is fantastic, especially in the second half. But I thought the, the Gabriel Haaland battle was just one that was so absorbing to watch. It's, I spent so much time just watching that rather than the match itself. And when I say that Arsenal mean business now and, that you know, yesterday really proved the point, I think that sort of battle there when you've got... You've got your centre-back going up against, you know, probably you would say the best striker in the world alongside Harry Kane, maybe. But the best out-and-out striker, a striker who bullies opponents week in, week out. We've seen what Saliba's done to Haaland already this season. Now we saw what Gabriel did to him yesterday and you could see the frustration in Haaland. I mean, they did sort of shake hands at the end. If you're watching YouTube, you can see that picture at the end. They did sort of share a hug. Guardiola had to separate him a little bit at full time. But quite, you could see Haaland was getting frustrated. He was just getting no change out of Arsenal. And no change out of Gabriel and no change out of Saliba. And you can just see Gabriel standing up to him constantly throughout the game, having a word in his ear. And that's when I, I just watch stuff like that and I take away from this game. And I think whatever happens between now and the end of the season, whether Arsenal go on and win this title or not, I just think they are, they are there to stay. And I think that's the biggest... It's such a positive. I, I just look at this team. I only think it's going to get better because these players aren't going anywhere. They're staying. They're all signed up to long-term contracts. Arsenal are going to add to this squad and they're growing season by season. You know, it's 11 months ago, Arsenal went to Man City and got hammered, battered off the pitch. And now in 11 months, you see the difference in performance. Yes, the two teams were in different stages and Arsenal went into that game at the Etihad last season, you know, with a few injuries and with the wheels already falling off. But... Even so, the improvement they've made as a team and how good they are and how difficult they are to play against, I think, has been absolutely massive. And I thought Gabriel against um, Haaland yesterday really sort of summed up where Arsenal are now as a team and why they need to be taken so, so seriously going forward. I mean, again, this is just a classic example. If you're watching on YouTube, you can see it, the head-to-head -head between the top three this season. You know, Arsenal beat Manchester City, drew with Manchester City, drew with Liverpool away, beat Liverpool at home. The other two games between the, the other games between the two teams have only drawn, you know, Arsenal comfortably ahead in the sort of battle between the top three. I think Arsenal against the top five teams this season are averaging two points a game. That's miles ahead of anyone else. And it, again, it just points to this is a proper team now. This is a team that can win things. I'm not saying they're going to win it. And I think they're going to find it very difficult from this point to win it. But they can win it. They are a proper, proper team. I'm really looking forward to the um, Champions League knockout stages. You know, if Arsenal can go and produce the type of performance they produced yesterday away from home in the Champions League, and they can do that uh, at Bayern Munich, and they can hopefully get through that and then do it in the semi-final, whether it be against Real Madrid or Manchester City again, then they're going to give themselves a really good opportunity to go on and get to the final of this competition because they know what they can do at home. We know how they can play at home. But if you can go away and you can shut up shop and you can be so, so difficult to beat, in Europe over two legs and you're going to give yourself a hell of a chance to get through 
to the uh, to the next round. Mikel speaking after the game, this is what he had to say. He said it was a thrilling game, a really tough match, a very demanding opponent, but I think we competed really well. Defensively, I think we were outstanding. We had to go and put them under pressure higher up the pitch. I think we were really good and created a lot of difficulties. When they are that good and they get you in a low block, it's very difficult to get out of it. They drop a lot of players, and I think we prevented the spaces really well, and that's a difficulty. It's the first time they haven't scored at home in three years, so that's the outstanding team that they are. And then the downside is we had some big situations to score. We didn't make the most out of them. And the next step is with the ball to have much more composure, especially in the first phase, to attack better on sort of taking pride from keeping two clean sheets against Man City this season in the league. He said it's huge, extremely difficult to do that. But that tells you the commitment of every player, the discipline that they showed and how they compete. One thing is to play a football match and the other is to compete in it. Against the team, we did that really, really well today. And that's what Arsenal did. They competed so many times. And this is what you know, people have been criticising Arsenal. When I say people, idiots on social media have been, have been criticising Arsenal. Rival fans, Liverpool fans with SZZ in there, SZN in their user handles. Um, basically trying to get clout on social media saying, oh, it's dead from Arsenal playing football. Like that. It's utter, utter rubbish. It's complete rubbish. It was a, this was a proper professional performance. I've been to the Etihad so many times and I've come away from that stadium having seen Arsenal get battered off the pitch, losing 4-0, 5-0, 3-0, 3-1, whatever it is. And yesterday I went there and I watched Manchester City barely lay a glove on Arsenal. Um, they need they could have been better going forward, Arsenal, no doubt about it. As I said, I think the injuries to their key real goal threats out wide limited them in terms of an attacking point of view. But they played very well, I thought, yesterday. And they deserve an awful lot of credit for that performance. They do not deserve any sort of criticism for what they did last night. They couldn't afford to lose that game. They didn't lose that game. They've taken four points from Manchester City this season. They've taken four points from Liverpool this season. That deserves an awful lot of credit. Mikel was saying that on what the results says about the development since last season. He says, it shows that we are improving, we are competing better, and we are understanding how you have to play these games. But there are more steps to make to win championships and to be there. You have to come here and win. And today we were able to draw. We still have to improve a lot to be able to do that. And that is the next step for Arsenal, you know, is to is to work out how you do win these games. Because as well as they played, as well as they played defensively, ultimately it was a draw. It was a game they really could have done with winning. You go back to the game at Anfield as well earlier in the season when they went 1-0 up early on. They only drew one. You know, these games, if Arsenal can get over the line and win these games then they're going to give themselves a hell of a lot of chance of winning, going on and winning titles. And that is the next step. And this is still with an evolution under Arteta and Arsenal. They're still very changing face of the football club at the moment. And each season, they need to continue to improve. And you look at what they've done this season, and it's un there are undoubtedly, undoubtedly a better football team now than they were last season. Last season was brilliant. I loved it. But there is no way you can tell me Arsenal aren't a better team now than they were last season. Even if they go on and win nothing this season, they are definitely a better team. They are definitely improving and they're definitely laying their foundations to go on and win major, major trophies. But now it's about taking the next step and you've got to go and do that, whether that be in the summer transfer market, whether it be improving the players that you have now, we'll have to wait and see. But I think the good thing was that Arsenal weren't satisfied with what happened yesterday. Mikel says it there. William Saliba said it afterwards when he was talking in the, uh, to the te television media after the, after, the, um, after the game. They knew you know, they've got to win. They've got to go and win these games. And uh, that's something that is the next step stage in their uh, in their development. But that's where, how things are panning out. If you're watching on YouTube, you can see the league table. Now Liverpool obviously in the driving seat, 67 points with nine games to go. They're two points ahead of Arsenal, three points ahead of Manchester City. The points, uh, sorry, the Opta prediction in terms of going on to win the title. Interesting here. Uh, in terms of how much the weekend has changed things. So before the weekend's games, Liverpool had a 35, just over 35% chance of going on and winning the title, according to the Opta um, analysis. Now, after the weekend, they have 47%, just over 47 point, um, yeah, just over 47%. So it's 47.7%, just under 50% chance going on to win the title now, according to those predictions. Manchester City have dropped from 46% to just over 33%. Arsenal, no change at all. Still very much third in the contenders list for this title, despite sticking sec sitting second in the table at the moment, with an 18% chance of going on and win the title. And I think that is pretty fair. I think it's going to be difficult for Arsenal to win this title. They're certainly in it. 
and they certainly have a chance and they will continue to fight. But it's just when you look at the fixtures, they are very, very difficult. Um, I kind of felt that they needed to win yesterday. Maybe not. I mean, I think they certainly have to win at Spurs and Manchester United now. And that is, but as well as that, you've basically got to win at Brighton and Wolves as well. I don't think when you look at Liverpool's results, uh, sorry, look at Liverpool's fixtures between now and the end of the season, I just don't see them dropping many points. The thing with Liverpool, they always give you the, it always looks like they might drop points. Even yesterday, it looked like they might drop drop points. They weren't get great against Brighton. They haven't been great all season. Teams get lots of chances against them, but they just find a way to to win. Liverpool have that firepower that Arsenal don't, even though Arsenal scored more goals than them this season, which sounds a bit stupid, but you know what I mean. Um, and I think that's going to probably, it's going to be very hard for Arsenal. Not impossible, but I just look at it and I can understand those those uh, percentages now when it looks at a prediction but we'll have to wait and see there's a long way to go you know Arsenal have got a better goal difference which could be important as well so we'll have to wait and see but uh, it's one thing we do know is it's going to be a really really exciting tight race between now and the end of the season okay going over my play ratings now now I did make a couple of tweets to these on the way home I was thinking about it um specifically to Declan Rice, Martin Odegaard, and I gave Kivior. I moved Kivior up to six from a five. I thought I was thinking, I was like, was five fair on Kivior? He did struggle. He was targeted quite a lot, but he still did play his part in keeping a clean sheet against Manchester City at the Etihad. And I thought maybe five was a little bit harsh on him. And I thought maybe Odegaard and Rice, I was a bit harsh. I initially gave Odegaard a six and a Rice a seven, but... I did think I was going to ask kind of, Rice did play very, very well against Rodri. And I thought Odegaard as well did probably just about get a, um, deserve more above a six. Now, don't forget six in my mind, in my rating, six is a good score. Six isn't, doesn't mean you've had a bad game. Six means you've played pretty well when it's a, um, a you know, six isn't a bad result. And I, I, as usual, my ratings get lots of comments. Um, but yeah, six so is a decent. So that, that doesn't mean you've had a bad game. So my, my ratings in the end, I gave Raya a six, White an eight, Saliba and Gabriel. Uh, no, Saliba an eight. I gave Gabriel a nine. Actually, I bumped Gabriel up to nine. I initially gave him eight. He was my man of the match. And I know Saliba got man of the match from Sky, but Gabriel, I thought, was fantastic. He got my man of the match. Kivior, six. Jorginho, six. Odegaard, seven. Rice, eight. Saka, four. Haver, six. And Jesus, six. I just thought Haver... Oh, uh, sorry. Saka was clearly just not fit. He didn't have a great game. He wasn't really involved too much. Um, just wasn't fit. I thought that was a gamble that didn't really pay off for Mikel Arteta. So those are my player ratings now. I haven't had a little bit more time to think about it and assess it a little bit more and think over things. Raya 6, White 8, Saliba 8, Gabriel 9, Kivior 6, Jorginho 6, Odegaard 7, Rice 8, Saka 4, Havert 6, and Jesus 6. In terms of Saka and the injury, Mikel said, well, as you know, he's been out for a few weeks now with a little problem and he was feeling that fatigue. Right now, he hasn't trained. He trained one day before the match. He had a big contribution, but 90 minutes were too much for him today. I did look at that as he limped off in that second half and I just thought maybe he shouldn't have, you know, you, I can understand why you take that gamble in a game of that magnitude when you've got a player like Sacco who can win you a game out of nothing, who even when he's not playing well can still contribute with an assist or a goal. But I don't think it worked. And I think it limited Arsenal a little bit in terms of their attacking output, having Sakharov over there, who was just you know, playing, operating at 70% at best. But by the end of the end of the second half, when he went off, he was operating at 50%. He could barely walk. And maybe it would have been better to play someone who was fitter, even if it was, you know, even if it meant not not playing Saka. So uh, we'll wait and see. I mean, I can't see he's going to play against Luton at the weekend. I'd be very surprised when you've got the Champions League games coming up. Uh, sorry, at Luton on Wednesday night. When you've got the Champions League games coming up, you've got a really tough away game at Brighton on Saturday night. I think Luton, you're probably looking at that and you're going to have to come up with something new, whether that be Jesus on the right, Trossard on the left, whether that be Reese Nelson on the right. We'll have to wait and see, but I'd be very surprised if Saka starts in that game. Well, moving on to some of your comments and how you've been reacting to yesterday's result. Mr. Andy Two at the top says, our goal difference could be worth a point, which I think is a really good point. <laughs> um, Arsenal obviously ahead of both City and Liverpool in goal difference at the moment with nine games to go. I think there's six clear of Liverpool in, in goal difference. So that could end up being worth more of a point. So there's something to certainly keep an eye on. Uh, I think that's... Is that Morgay says, I've said this for a while. We don't have to beat City to win the title, but we can't lose to them. A draw of City is a good result. We played 36 other games and only played City twice in the course of the season. Dropping six points if we were to lose both games is a huge pothole 
in the road to a title. Walking away with a, a worse to draw in both games keeps us in the hunt. This season, we took four points off City out of a possible six. That's a big improvement over previous years. Unfortunately, Liverpool is resurgent this year and currently holds the advantage and the easiest running. We have to be perfect for the remaining nine games and hope Liverpool drop points along the way. Uh, Johnny says, was this a defensive masterclass from Arteta? I say it was. And does this bode well for our Champions League campaign? I say it does. I haven't seen an Arsenal side this solid since the days of George Graham. We've just proved that when needed, we can have a, we can shut a world-class team out for 90 minutes. Combine this performance with how we've blown teams away of late. And there's evidence that Arsenal have the ingredients to do something special this season. Yeah, 100%. I agree with it. Like I said, I just felt, unfortunately, Arsenal just didn't have the attacking output yesterday because of some key injuries to key players, which just limited them in terms of how much they could have got on and hurt. Manchester City, Jeff here says, Hi, Charles. I agree with you that Gabriel was great today, but Saliba was absolutely deserving man of the match. He led or jointly led the team in touches, duels one, tackles one, clearances and possession one. Elizabeth says, hi, Charles. It's been a few hours after the match ended and I can't understand the narrative around this result. Arsenal being ridiculed for getting a draw at the Etihad all week. Combined 11s were full of Man City players because they are the best team in the world and few expected Arsenal to get a result. Then Arsenal go and get a 0-0 draw and they're saying Arsenal was scared or all Arsenal did was park the bus or at least Liverpool gave Man City a proper game. Like what? We did what we needed to do at the end of the day. Arsenal remain unbeaten against Liverpool and Man City. So what does it matter if Arsenal had a low block or not? This is a results-based time of the season. Winning is what is most important, not necessarily the performances. Proud of the boys for working hard and getting the job done. We've loved three points, but I think we can hold our head high. Brilliant co comment there, Liz. Absolutely spot on. Um, I think you're right. And the, the whole, when you say the narrative, I just wouldn't worry about it too much because it's not narrative by anyone um, other than annoyed Liverpool fans sitting in their bedroom um, getting frustrated about the fact that Arsenal didn't go there and, as usual, get beaten 5-0. So I wouldn't worry too much about what the narrative on social media is, to be honest. And Membry999 says, Hi, Charles. I think today really showed why Arteta wanted a player in the style of Mudrick with Martinelli and Saka on fit. We lack threat and pace from the wings. Martinelli would have been an essential outlet on the counter against City's makeshift back four. Also, I'm shocked Arteta dropped Trossard considering how unfit Saka looked. Shows that we really lack a suitable alternative on the right wing. Signing a forward who can play both wings seems a logical next step. Yeah, absolutely. I think the lack of pace for Arsenal was really evident yesterday. Martinelli not playing was a massive, massive blow, a massive miss. I think, as I said, Martinelli fit um, at 100%. I think Arsenal win that game. And I think you're right. When you look at that sort of Mudrick type player who can just stretch teams, who's got that just searing pace. It's just something that is missing in Arsenal. And I think it's something they definitely need to look at um, come the summer just to give them another little ingredient to their attack something that's just missing at the moment and I think it is hurting them a little bit uh, finally here's one from Gorgon who says did I hear right did I hear right Sir Charles Arteta got a rated out of six this is me saying I gave Arteta a rating of six out of ten yesterday this was a defensive masterclass at the European champion and treble winners we kept this gargantuan city goalless at their home turf what a result and it keeps us in the chase and off the highlight reels for the moment to a man love how the boy defended and represented i will take that one point any day at the etihad yeah i gave him a six arteta maybe that was harsh as well the main reason i gave him a six and i sort of dropped him down because obviously what he did and how he set the team up was brilliant and it worked and deserves a lot of credit for that how well drilled he is he got the team to see off man city for that 90 minutes but i think i actually i sort of took a point off because i just thought his decision to play saka didn't work i thought it I thought it was a gamble. I could understand why he did it, but I just didn't think it worked. And I thought it ended up hurting Arsenal a little bit. So that's why I sort of, instead of giving him a seven, I gave him a six. But uh, but yeah, maybe I was being a little bit harsh on that one as well. There's no doubt that uh, the sort of tactically what he did, he got it absolutely spot on. And the work they did in the training ground ahead of that game had Arsenal so well prepared for what Manchester City were going to do and the threat that they were going to possess. And so he does deserve an awful lot of credit for that as well. And I think it does show that Arsenal are continue to improve. Right, before I go, just massive congratulations to the Arsenal women who, annoyingly because of the schedule yesterday, you had these two big games going on at the same time, which is just so ridiculous. Um, and it is a real, real shame. But still thousands and thousands of Arsenal fans made the trip to Molyneux yesterday to watch the Continental Cup final against Chelsea. Uh, which Arsenal won thanks to Blackstinius is going it extra time, uh, getting a one nil win. On the way to the game yesterday, I stopped off at um, Stratford service station and it was absolutely heaving with Arsenal and Chelsea fans on their way to Molyneux. And um, yeah, brilliant result, one nil, fantastic. Stopped Chelsea's hopes of a quadruple in Emma Hayes' last season as well, which is always good. 
Um, and just brilliant scenes at the end when he's sort of watching them in that massive, I think, it, I think they call it the Cop at Molyneux, just packed thousands upon thousands of Arsenal fans with the women celebrating, lifting the trophy in front of them and having photos and singing North London forever. It was just brilliant. Uh, and so congratulations to the women. Fantastic. Obviously a worrying moment in it with uh, Frida Manham going off with that. Um, well, we're not sure exactly what it is yet. It's not, we've, we've not been informed, but she collapsed on the pitch, really worrying. You know, I was sitting with my computer open in the, in the press box at Man City when it was all going off and it was really sort of worrying looking at what was happening and the updates we were getting. But, you know, crucially, Arsenal tweeted out that Frida was conscious and was uh, in a stable condition. She did travel back with the squad, which was good. You know, side of afterwards saying that she was going to travel back with the squad and he didn't know too much else in terms of what the actual issue was. But yeah, worrying scenes there. But fingers crossed, Frida is going to be OK. And the fact that she did travel home with the squad was certainly a good thing. So uh, obviously a worrying part of what was a really special day for Arsenal women. But Hopefully, you know, all our thoughts with you, Frida. Hopefully you recover very, very quickly and you can join in the celebrations between uh, between now and the summer. All right, and that's it from me today, everyone. Thank you very much for watching. Thanks for your time. As always, we'll be back tomorrow to do it all over again as we prepare for another big, big game. Luton at the Emirates, Wednesday night. These games are coming thick and fast now. Until then, everyone, have a good day. I'll speak to you soon. Bye-bye.